I want to welcome you all to today's broadcast. And before I really, really get into it, because, you know, coming into a new year, you begin to think about all of the things that you've gone through in the previous year. And so I wanted to utilize this space to actually take some time to be a bit more reflective and also to do some forecasts as to what is important for Black Travelers Network and what we're looking forward to uh, for the 2024 uh, calendar year. And so I think the best way to start this off is to once again, thank everyone. Thank you all so much. You know, we reached over 1,000 subscribers several days before the new year. And so it was really a great way for all of us to bring in the new year because, you know, this is all about furthering the travel message and traveling, not just domestically, but also internationally when it comes to the worldwide black community. And so I want to talk quickly about Black Travelers Network, uh, our journey here on YouTube. And it is, trust me, it has been a journey in general, <laughs> but especially uh, here on YouTube. And it's so crazy to me because with YouTube, YouTube wasn't even supposed to be a journey. <laughs> That's the funny thing about the entire situation. I, I, I'm highlighting uh, the YouTube journey that wasn't even a journey, like it wasn't supposed to be. And, you know, it didn't start out with us trying to reach any particular number of subscribers here on YouTube. If that was the goal, the content, I believe, certainly would have likely been very, very different. It started out with just a strong need and desire for me as the lead of Black Travelers Network to connect with the members of the Black Travelers Network community. So reaching 1,000 subscribers has totally exceeded my expectations because it was never about that. It was simply about uh, growing the Black Travelers Network community outside of the online space and platforms and really connecting with those people who wanted to travel and, and be members of our travel community. And YouTube only came about because I felt like it was an important tool to connect people with the trips that we having had coming up. So definitely a great way of communicating about our trips. And when I say people, I mean specifically the people in our community. What a lot of people don't know is that, yeah, you know, if you look at the amount of videos we've put up, we've put up about 200 and something, close to 300 videos that are public, you know. Uh, but we have so many videos that are private that are just for our community, our Black Travelers Network community. These are videos that have been uploaded over time and no one ever gets to see because, you know, they were really designed as a way of just communicating with our travelers and the people who wanted to, to meet up with us locally. It was also, YouTube has also been a great tool to, for us to make announcements to our travelers uh, about, you know, not just the upcoming trips, but just basic information. You know, you must remember when Black Travelers Network started, we started as a blog. It was not a travel platform to, for people to get together and travel the world. It simply started as a blog that was designed to give tips on how to travel and where to travel to. And as time went on, it became more apparent 
that people wanted to take our online information and meet up locally uh, and travel together from the meetups that we had. And so we had meetups in Los Angeles. We had meetups in Houston, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. Like we, we had a number of different meetups locally before we ever even uploaded a single video on the YouTube platform. And so because of that, uh, you know, the YouTube channel also was an avenue to carry some of those messages that were disseminated through the original blog to our uh, travel community online. Uh, so the first place uh, we actually traveled to uh, was the country of Brazil. And the thing about traveling to Brazil is Brazil was a place that I didn't even want to go to. When I thought about Brazil, I actually thought about waiting until I got a little bit older. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't want to travel to Brazil. And I'm so young. I actually wanted to travel to Brazil like when I got in my late 40s, early 50s or 40s and 50s was a Brazil trip for me. It was not, it was not any time before then. <laughs> That's the funny part. Uh, you know, my first place that I wanted our travelers to, to go to was actually South Africa. That was, one visit to South Africa changed the whole idea of travel for me. That was my actual goal was bringing people together so we could all travel to South Africa because I was wildly impressed with the country. It went so far beyond what I ever saw or thought about the country. So that was the goal of Black Travelers Network and taking the community that was online, offline. It's like, let's go to South Africa. That was the first destination and I'm going to come back to to that point but the point of creating the Black Travelers Network community in general was because as a as a corporate traveler because at that time I was a corporate traveler I traveled all over the United States lived in multiple cities for over a decade I would see very few black people traveling. I was literally in the airport every other weekend for, yeah, like the better part of a decade, a little bit more than, than a decade. And because I was in and out of the airport so much, I would see Monday through Sunday, the, the demographic of travelers who actually were catching flights and none of them I'm not going to say none of them, very few, very, very few of them looked like me. And so I, I started to think like, hmm, there may be something there where there's a reason why most of the people who are black are not traveling like that. It just blew my mind. And then in living in these different cities, I would always meet other black people who talked so openly about wanting to travel internationally and how the last trip they may have taken was somewhere in the United States, which I'm a big fan of travel, where, whether it's domestic or international. I just prefer the international travel because I think it's more cost effective and it gives you the most um, when it comes to cultural uh, immersion and experiencing other cultures and just learning, just learning in general. Um, but I wanted to create a community that kind of called us out as black people and say, Hey, you know, you are welcome to come over here and join our group as we travel around the world. That was the whole point of taking black travelers network from being strictly online to offline, like really being a resource for people who wanted to go to different places, but maybe for one reason or another, they didn't have the, the community 
of family or friends who would actually take the time and uh, go with them to these places. And so as a result of that, this is like what really was my strong, strong motivation to to pull the community together. So some, so unlike what some, and I'm just going to call them out, small minded people have thought over the course of the years, it was not a way of dissing other groups of people or saying you can't travel with us. I can't tell you, I've heard so many black people say that because I called the community black travelers network, because I called it Black Travelers Network, somehow I was being racist. I've also heard the same thing from non-Black people, which is the funniest thing because it's like so far from the truth. I don't, usually I don't acknowledge it because it's just, it's hilarious to me and it's it, it's not a reflection of of the intent of the community. The community really was designed to be a space for black people to network among each other, a way of networking with other groups and other communities that do not look like us. <laughs> when you travel the world, you're not traveling to, you're not really traveling to uh, places where you are only able to see people who look like you i mean or you're only able to to get from america to these other places just solely through working with black people that is not uh a possibility that i see <laughs> here so it it was a way of of communicating with uh with other groups of people that yes you know this is uh, a platform that's largely focused on black travelers but you know we're open to networking and we're also open to visiting places around the world to experience it uh, it was also a way of using travel to further our education as adults about worldwide black history that will never be taught. I'm telling you, th these are things that will never be taught in any school system in America. And there are so many things you can't even find in books that you learn just from traveling the world. And so for me, it was incredibly important to have a focus be on international travel this community was truly designed to celebrate educate and bring black people together but it it's not a diss or a dig towards any non-black people and the people who are not black who i've met over and throughout the years who understand what our focus and our goal is not only do they get it and not only are they supportive but I've had a number of non-black people uh, who have informed the black people that they know <laughs> about our platform and so uh, that's always exciting to connect with people who don't look like you who get it who understand the value and uh, history and cultural preservation. I'm a huge um, proponent of that, no matter what the group of people is, because I, I really feel like uh, as time go goes on and we become a more technologically advanced society, cultural preservation, cultural celebration, and just understanding the history uh, of, of who we are, uh, as individuals and who we are uh, as groups of people is really important in just preserving that. I, No matter the group, no matter the culture, I really uh, am a huge uh, proponent of, of people working together to preserve their history and their culture. And slowly but surely over time, you know, the Black Travelers Network platform uh, has added a number of different trips to our roster over the years uh, and I'm wildly excited about that 
and I'm going to uh, share our uh, 2024 uh, trips with all of you. <laughs> so just in case uh, you have not seen our previous videos, uh, I always encourage and ask you to plug in to any of the trips that you are most interested in being a part of. Right now, we're in the very early stages of list building. And when I say list bu building, I mean, we are working right now to identify the people who are very serious about traveling to any one of these destinations. And so the first destination on the list that we are going to is Brazil. We will be in Brazil uh, next month. Uh, in February for Rio Carnival. So that is coming up. And Spain is up right after that. And uh, South Africa, Kenya, Vietnam, all of those are uh, what's what's on the list up next. And so what we need from those of you who are who are watching this on the playback is we need you to email us Black Travelers Network at gmail.com that's black travelers is spelled t-r-a-v-e-l-e-r-s network at gmail.com and let us know uh, which of these trips stand out to you we want to build the list first because our trips happen based off of those people who are not just interested because you talk to most people most people are, are going to be interested, um, but it really comes down to who has the financial wherewithal and the ability uh, to uh, take the time off that you need to take in order to be a part of the group. If there's not enough interest, we're not gonna move forward with it. It doesn't make sense to do that. Um, but we want to know from, from those of you who are listening from our travel community, those, those who are not a part of the travel community, community, if any of these destinations jumps out at you, let us know. And this, I must say, this travel platform has not been an easy platform to run and maintain because we've gone through so many ups and downs in the world in particular, the world of travel, with us sort of facing the biggest global pandemic of our lifetime. You know, the 2020 pandemic that shut down the world, uh, you know, it, the effect really was for a couple of years. It, it's something that in hindsight, I look back on and I'm just blown away. It like blows my mind that it is that it lasted that long <laughs> number one and that as a travel platform we were actually able to overcome it you know overcome it and survive and not even overcome it and survive but you know we have amazing travelers who are a part of the black travelers network community who travel with us and who, who've traveled with us even during the global pandemic and so we are so thankful that we survived that and shout out to the black travelers network community because we still had those trips popping during that global pandemic people were ready to get out the house and people had their resources and they were ready to go and we were here for them and, you know, one important moment that I still reflect on from during the global pandemic is that one of our uh, amazing, amazing uh, uh, contacts that we worked with directly for years in the country of Brazil, her name was uh, Angelica. Angelica was extremely... Uh, she was such a special person, ladies and gentlemen. And I say such a special person because every time we went to uh, Brazil, uh, Angelica would invite us in her home and she would cook for us. Like this was like 
a home cooked meal, Brazilian style. She also designed uh, jewelry. She made uh, uh, lots of jewelry and sold the jewelry uh, in her home. But I absolutely um, just love Angelica and I miss her dearly. Uh, this was one of the, the last times, not one of the last times, this was the last time uh, we actually saw Angelica. She wild, was wildly famous in Brazil for in for really not just being a cook, but pre preserving culture in the context of food. Uh, she has a book. Uh, she wrote an amazing message to me in my book that I bought uh, when we visit visited her the last time uh, and uh, it was just a message that I carry forward with me um, but she's wildly famous she cooked and fed Angela Davis she'd also uh, cooked for uh, and fed Anthony Bourdain when he was alive she made it a point to um, talk to him and, and kind of teach him about the history and the culture of Brazil and the foods. And he spent some time with Angelica uh, while he was in Brazil. And I, I can't remember if, I believe she may have been a part of the Parts Unknown episode. Uh, and so it's just one of those uh, deeply, uh, I'm trying to find the right word, deeply emotional, uh, experiences that I've had n because seeing her the last time I saw her was in 2021 that was the last time I was in that part of uh, Brazil but she always provided such an amazing home-cooked meal that I just can't even describe how how wonderful the food was she just she the way she orchestrated the dishes and what she put in it I remember our last conversation she talked about uh, how you know she she doesn't use like measuring or recipes it comes straight from her intuition the flavors and the the recipes it just it's in her she said as black women certain things are just in us and for her what's in her is the food like how to pull the dishes together and make it absolutely amazing and so I just had to take a moment during this broadcast to uh you know just reflect on how important Angelica has been to the Black Travelers Network community and how much I absolutely miss her and going back to Brazil this particular part uh Bahia is not the same it's just going to feel so different uh when we return and we are looking to return in 2023 so be mindful of that um may god rest her soul angelica she showed us an amazing time uh our uh, travelers bought jewelry while they were there i bought a book from her uh, she was just a truly beautiful soul, beautiful spirit. She couldn't communicate in English, but her Portuguese, uh, she did her very best uh, to uh, help us to understand. And I'm just super thankful and grateful for all the years that she worked with our uh, travelers in, in, in really showing them the best the country has to offer. But you know, 2023 <laughs> was very, very interesting. Uh, it was a very interesting year for me uh, personally, I must say. And, you know, if you feel compelled, drop drop some comments. Let us know how your 2023 was. Uh, was it amazing? Was it uh, challenging? Uh, let us know. You know, I, I love doing these moments where I'm able to peek inside the lives of other people. Challenging for, for me in so many ways, but great in, in so many other ways. You know, I was actually online earlier today and some important questions popped in my feed and I wanted to anchor 
this broadcast uh, in, in, with these questions. And I encourage those of you who are listening uh, live or listening on the playback to take a moment and self-reflect and answer any one of these questions. You can do it in the comments or you can do it as a personal exercise where you write them down for yourself and answer them. You know, I'm one of those people, I'm a big believer in writing things down. Uh, you know, it's important for, it's an important aspect of self-reflection and also a very important uh, technique for manifesting the things that you want. I've personally experienced uh, manifesting things throughout my entire life all based off of the things that I had written down. And it's so wild because the last thing I actually manifested, I wrote it down completely forgot about it was doing some cleaning found my little journal and had seen like two to three years prior the entry that I had written on the first page of the journal had completely come to pass and I got goosebumps just reading it like oh my gosh I can't believe I wrote this down and I and it happened <laughs> so some people like to do it with vision boards I'm more of a writer type of person so um yeah, I just encourage you if, if you have time while we're early in the year to do some self-reflection and do some manifestation work. So again, feel free to participate in this exercise and carry these questions forward in your life. The questions that came up today that really got me thinking, what are you proud to have accomplished last year in, in 2023? What is one of your proudest moments and you know i've had so many proud moments uh throughout my my life and i've just been super blessed and super grateful um but i'll keep this in the in the context of uh black travelers network as much as i can I think for me, it's not so much as what was accomplished in 2023. I think it's what I realized we had accomplished in 2023. Uh, you know, as I stated earlier, our first trip was to travel to Brazil. That was the first trip we as a community, a travel community ever took on line. Um, well, took took from online to offline. It was our first group uh, travel experience was to Brazil. And I realized in like doing moments of self-reflection at, at the time that we'd gone to Brazil, Brazil was not the place to go. It was not the place to visit. It was not the place to be. And so where we are right now with so many travelers, visiting Brazil and wanting to visit Brazil and putting Brazil on their bucket list, I feel that Black Travelers Network and our partners in Brazil and our, um, our network in Brazil has been very instrumental in shifting that narrative and that dynamic from what Brazil has historically been which is not really the best image to not only have we changed the narrative about the country but we've consistently gone and visited and taken travelers and now well i'll get to where we're where we're going in brazil uh in a bit but you have to understand when we started traveling to brazil there were Americans who were traveling, you know, Americans have traveled all over the world, but it was not the, within the context of the black community, it was not the level of excitement that I'm seeing for Brazil right now. I, I'll take it back to the historical timeline. March, 2015 in the country of the, of Brazil, the big thing was the Zika virus outbreak. You know, they showed all of these images on and throughout the, the news, world news here in the United States, local news about the ravaging Zika virus and how it was taking its toll. And it, in particular, it affected pregnant women really uh, at, at, at a level that had not been 
experienced or or or, or um, expected. So we would see uh, images on the news of these babies born with these full grown bodies and these tiny little heads. And when I say full grown, I mean like baby bodies, but the head was like so small. I don't know if those of you remember those images that and that time when they were talking about Zika virus. So that turned off American travelers to Brazil. Brazil actually hosted the Olympics in 2016. And I don't know if you guys remember, but that scandal that came out for the, during the Olympics was uh, with, oh, I can't remember that swimmer's name, but it was basically a swimmer who lied and said that he had been robbed or something, something had happened to him that involved violence and, and guns and all that stuff. But anyway, that came as a result of the Olympics that was held right there in Rio. And that was a big story ab about the country. It just reflected negatively in the press. And then there's always been this discussion about drugs and violence in the country, the, the gangs, you know, it's just been a bad look for Brazil for a while. But we first started traveling to Brazil around 20, 2016, 2017. So we were really in a lot of ways, the group of people that kind of embraced the negative narrative and said, let's jump out there and let's see. And so we went to Brazil, had an amazing time, shared pictures online. We did so many things on that first trip to Brazil. So you go from the Zika virus turning people off to the violence that happened at the Olympics, at the Olympics in 2016 to the whole like violence and images coming out of Brazil when it came to like gangs. Through networking and partnerships in the country, we have been able to counter those images and really influence black travelers all over the world to travel to the country of Brazil. Like it's one of the top destinations that more black people have been going to and visiting. And, you know, sometimes the work we do is not seen immediately, but the fruits of the labor that we've done are definitely begin to show. And that's the one thing I realized as a proud accomplishment that I had from 2023 is just the realization that those um, seeds we, we've been planting throughout the years about this particular country and how amazing it is are really starting to bear fruit. And there was a recent story in the news the other day of a man who was on this cruise, a black man who, who was not allowed to board his cruise ship after he had gotten off and taken a side trip to Brazil. I was like, there we go. And they, they showed a picture of him and he was just smiling away because he got a chance to take his side trip to Brazil. You know, Brazil has always been, um, notorious for not just the drugs, the violence and all of that, but the, I'll, I'll, you know, because of how uh, YouTube is sensitive uh, about the language, a particular kind of tourism that um, that is, you know, a little bit on the seedy side of things. <laughs> you know, I'm sure everybody who's listening uh, knows uh, about the other uh, negative images that are associated with the country. So just seeing that narrative change. Uh, another amazing thing that I, I did in 2023 that was a proud accomplishment of mine is something I actually don't even talk about. <laughs> um, but I had a, a wonderful opportunity of working uh, on a budget for a documentary uh, film project. Uh, and meeting with an amazing group of brothers and sisters to pull this 
uh, a film project together. Um, I can't talk about it because, you know, we're still in that phase where we're trying to, uh, you know, find uh, uh, executive producers uh, who will uh, fund it. But it was just amazing and wonderful and exciting to be on the team and to have the ability to uh, do the research and the work to pull together a viable budget for a film. And we discussed pre-production, production and post-production and what all of those elements look like it's not my film project uh and i just there are so many things i just like to be a part of because i see the goal and the vision of other people and if i feel like i can add to the picture and play a major role in it i will do that and so that's one of those items that's still on the list because we still have quite a ways to go. Uh, and I think the biggest thing with this film project is, is the funding piece of it. But, you know, to, to be able to wrap my head around the actual numbers of it and what it takes to, to produce it, uh, it was just such a wonderful, amazing learning experience. And I always like being around people who know way more than I do. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, an accomplishment in and of itself. This was just so much fun. Uh, and I think those are uh, my two big wins from 2023. Also exploring new territory in my beloved country of Brazil. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to tell everybody about this trip. We're still compiling the images from uh, the visit to uh, the amazing Recife and uh, the, the unforgettable island that's off the coast that hardly anybody from America ever visits because quite frankly, so many of us don't even know it exists. And uh, you have to take uh, special measures and protocols to even get to the island that's just so luxurious and beautiful. Um, so I can't wait. That's on our, our, our list for uh, this year. It's actually a, a destination that makes the most sense to visit in November. So we will be going back to Brazil in November. Uh, and that trip will include an ex a visit to a very exotic destination. I'm talking about people swimming with sharks. Uh, it was just phenomenal. I can't even, I can go on and on and on about that trip. I actually, as much as I travel around the world, I am not an adventure seeker or an adventure traveler, but to be able to go in a canoe in the ocean and mind you, I don't swim either <laughs> and, uh, be in the midst of a pot of dolphins. Oh my goodness. This is just like, I said, that is the place that I want to take as many people as I possibly can take uh, to this particular island, although they have limits on the island uh, in terms of how many people can actually be a part of uh, visiting the island at one time. So I'm going to do a special broadcast uh, when we drop that trip uh, about that exciting destination. Um, but the second question I want to get to, uh, well, what goals were not achieved in 2023? And this is one of those that I love answering because it's a, it's a way of me checking myself, like checking myself, checking our community. What did we put on the list that we did not get accomplished? And so many people struggle and have problems being honest about like, yeah, I went out for that, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Some people try to cover up their losses. You know, we like to highlight our wins and cover up our losses, but I, I, I talk about my losses. I, I have no problem with that. And the main goal I would say that was not achieved in 2023 is I had a goal for Black Travelers Network to raise $25,000 and gift it to various uh, organi organizations that exist within the black community. That was a goal. And as the leader of Black Travelers Network, I have a list of how I would like to get this accomplished. And I've been very intentional and very diligent 
about uh, strategically planning on how we're going to raise the $25,000 to give back to the black community uh, and to be able to share with those uh, uh, donors and contributors where specifically where the money went, uh, the organizations it went to. Uh, that was my goal. And uh, the challenge is the work that I did. I feel like I need to work on it more. Like I, there was so much that happened in 2023 that unfortunately I was, I kind of deviated from it. I did a lot of work uh, on it the previous year and the work to kind of like tie it all in in 2023. I personally uh, dropped the ball on that. And that's the thing that I wanted to accomplish that I was not able to accomplish through Black Travelers Network um, this year. So that is my major failure, <laughs> the goal that was not achieved. Um, and so it's still a goal. It's still a goal. And so we move forward. The third question, and we have four questions. Um, the third question that popped up in my feed um, was what's a rich life investment I happily made in 2023. And for me, um, the, the rich life purpose, the rich life investment, I should say that I made in 2023, uh, it was my education <laughs> hands down, you know, from what I've been able to gather from studying people who are, uh, successful, uh, both financially and, uh, socially successful, uh, it usually involves education, them going through some level of education. And I invest so much, uh, in my, in myself when it comes to self-education and I'm always taking some, some type of class, or I'm always in between reading books. Uh, the book that I'm actually reading now is a book by, um, uh, I, I hope I'm not getting his name wrong. Um, but I want to say LaRon Bennett, uh, it's, the book is forced into glory. Uh, it's, uh, the story of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, that is a book that I am actually reading right now. Uh, and LaRon Bennett is actually a really great author. I think the thing that made me want to read this book, and it's a, it's a massive book. Let me just say that it's massive. Um, but he also, uh, did another book that I read that was about, uh, the life of John Johnson, uh, the, the guy who created, uh, Ebony. I think I'm saying his name correctly. I read that book a long time ago. Um, but I really love, uh, that particular, uh, book about his, uh, about how Ebony magazine was, was sort of brought from nothing to something and just its overall evolution. And so self-education <laughs> is one thing I always invest in self-study. I also do other things outside of travel. And one thing I'm actively working on is, is actually creating a business uh, that is in the financial service sector. So when I'm in the United States, this requires quite a bit of work and education, formal education on my part. So formal classes uh, I have to take uh, in order uh, to uh, be in position to uh, create a business uh, in this sector. Uh, it's a big investment. Uh, it's, it's definitely a big in investment, um, but it's definitely a requirement as I branch into that area of business. So not only do I put time and money behind uh, what I do, um, but I also put action behind it as well, which is typically why my time is often very limited, limited and I'm so protective over my time. Uh, I just, I, I don't have a lot of it. And so I'm very stingy with it. So unfortunately, I don't spend a lot of time on the phone. I don't uh, get a chance to spend a lot of time, uh, at, at lounges and partying. I mean, I love doing those things, but I don't have time, uh, because I am very much uh, mission and purpose focused. So 
that was my investment, my rich life investment. And the final question is, what would you like to happen in 2024? What would I like to happen in 2024? Well, when it comes to Black Travelers Network, I want to do more live videos. That is the purpose of this live. You know, I've had the ability to go live for a very long time. Uh, for Christmas, my mother bought me uh, a microphone. So I hope this is the sound is coming through really well because um, she knows and has seen how dedicated I am to uh, developing uh, this particular platform on YouTube, which, like as I said in the beginning, was not even a thing for me. Um, but uh, I want to do more live videos. I want to travel to new destinations. I want our community, Black Travelers Network, uh, to grow in terms of the amount of people we're able to help and bring together. Uh, these are goals that I'd like to see happen in 2024. And I also want to make some adjustments to the plan that I have for the giving back to local communities uh, for, for how we are giving back. Because when I look at my plan and how we're going to achieve that particular goal, I do need to make some adjustments and some tweaks to that particular uh, part of the strategic plan for Black Travelers Network. And so I am just so excited, so excited at what 2024 has to offer and can bring uh, to all of us. And so I encourage you to, hey, continue to celebrate the new year by, uh, creating your own list of goals, things you'd like to accomplish, places you'd like to visit. My goodness, please have a travel, please have a travel list uh, that you plan to not just talk about, but be about, like make it really happen. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have for today. Thank you once again, everyone, for getting us to this very unexpected milestone uh, on this particular platform, something we did not expect, we did not plan for, we did not anticipate, we did not work towards. <laughs> but it still feels really good uh, to get to uh, the subscriber number uh, that we're at. Uh, please, uh let people know about Black Travelers Network and, and our uh, travel, uh, you know, our travel experiences that we offer. And feel free to let us know if you would like to join. Happy New Year, everyone. And let's get this 2024 party started. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen.